All right, gentlemen, this rules. This fight is for the WBA Championship of the World. I'm here to enforce the rules. I want a good, clean fight. I don't want any rough tactics, any dirty fighting, because I'm not going to take anything from you guys as far as rough, rough tactics concerned. If I got to disqualify either one of you, I'll do it. You understand? I want a good, clean fight. Keep the punches up. Give me a clean fight. Check him up. A little intimidation on the part of Johnny Tapia, or at least trying to make it so. I don't know if Pauli Ayala did something to instigate that. Whatever the case, we're underway here in round one. Pauli Ayala, the challenger from Fort Worth, Texas. And Johnny Tapia, the defending champion. Right hand gets in by Tappy. He wants to throw the right. He also wants to throw the double left hook, which is a good weapon against the southpaw. And Tappy has one of the best in boxing. There's the hook, but a good counter right hand by Ayala. That's what he wants to do. So early we see the strategy of the two men played out very clearly. Tappy moving to his right, which is not, I don't think, the way he wants to go and we see Ayala really trying to plan that counter right hook against Tapia and it's getting there. Tapia making the second or the first defense in his WBA Bantamweight Championship there. It's talk he will move up to Super Bantamweight or Junior Featherweight after this and possibly take on Nestor Garza one of the champions good right hand by Tapia as he's starting to get that right hand in and throwing the hook but every time he throws the hook to the body Pauli Ayala very quick with his own counter right hook <laughs> Tapia slipped and got nailed with one punch by Ayala but not a knockdown You see why Pauliala is ranked number two. You see why he has such a worthy challenger. Very talented, skilled boxer. Good hook by Tapia. He knows how to fight a lefty as well as anybody in boxing. He knows that punch is essential. And Tapia's doing a very clever thing. He's moving to his right a lot, but then going back to his left to get his lead foot outside the right foot of Ayala. So he's really almost faking Ayala into a thinking he's moving always to the right, but then he comes back to the left and gets the right position. So an interesting first round, probably a slight edge to Tapia in this round, although Pauli Ayala got some things done as well. Here's Johnny Tapia landing his own left hook, but there's Ayala countering with the right hook. And that will be the repeat strategy throughout this fight. Which man will get that punch in better? As the round wore on, however, Tapia was able to land those left hooks without Ayala countering as well with his own right hook. So that's one of the many little dramas that will be played out over the course of this WBA Bantamweight Championship match. Johnny Tapia in the black trunks on the left of your scene. Your screen with the gold trimming and Pauli Ayala in the black trunks with his name in purple. Let Joe Cortez having a hard time breaking these two fighters. There is some bad blood brewing, and Joe Cortez gives him a lecture. Good hook downstairs by Tapia. He's an excellent body puncher and throws a great left hook downstairs.
ground speed of both these fighters impresses. You can see a good right hook by Ayala. And a hook again by Tapia. Boy, Johnny Tapia is digging those left hooks downstairs and to the head as well. A jab by Ayala. The skill level in this ring is superb. going downstairs to the body. And then Tapia digging his hook. Tapia now standing in front of Ayala. It is Paulie Ayala doing the work on the inside very well in this right round. Let's go. Give me three round, guys. Too much movement now from either man. Big left hook downstairs again by Tapia. Need that weapon against the left here. Good straight left hand by Allen. Tapia comes back with his own straight right. The Ayala jabs, but jab has been effective. Good hand speed by Tapia. Turning into even more of a brawl than we would have expected. Both men looking to set down on their punches. Good left hand by Ayala. Tapia throwing the hook and leaving himself open, and Ayala getting there with that punch. And remember, Johnny Tapia stepping up in weight, so he's facing a bigger man. And he's used to only one fight as a bantamweight. Polly Ayala puts his hands up and says, I did the job in that round, and he did. There's the straight left hand that sent Johnny Tapia backwards. And then on the inside, Ayala was very effective. Good left uppercut. And continues to throw punches in combination. So this has the makings of a very, very entertaining Bantamweight Championship match. It's always entertaining when Johnny Tapia is involved with Paulie Ayala, the 29-year-old from Fort Worth, Texas, who is absolutely convinced he can win this fight, has been hey, leading on, up on, to on, it, on, and he is showing you why he's, he was convinced he could win. He is performing very well early here. 32-year-old Johnny Tapia. Second fight that Freddie Roach has been his trainer, or third fight. Roach has been his trainer. And he's had many trainers over the course of the last four or five years. But uh, Freddie looks to be a good fit and a good right hook by Allen. That's been a good weapon for him. And another right hand by Paulie Ayala. Good combinations by Ayala. Showing you the hand speed that got him here. Tapia switches to lefty momentarily. Tapia slipped. That will not be a knockdown. But in the early going here, Pauli Ayala, especially in the second and third round, is dictating the pace of this fight. Of course, in his previous bid to win a world title, Ayala was short-circuited when the class of heads caused a cut. They went to the scorecards. He lost good left hand by Ayala. And he realized that you have to fight every round, as he said, like it's your last. And boy, he's doing that here against Johnny Tapia. Under a minute left to go here. In the third round, another good round for Pauli Ayala. And the folks watching in Fort Worth, Texas, of which I'm sure there are many, are quite happy. 
with a nice combination, good hand speed, the right and then the left. Let me go, please, let me go, let me go. Another big round for Pauli Ayala. And this is what Freddie Roach is talking about, although here Tapia was moving, got hit with a good straight left hand by Paulie Ayala. Now, right in front of Ayala is where they don't want Tapia, and there he gets nailed with a right hook. So, a little concern in the corner of Tapia, and uh, Freddie Roach with some pretty good advice use your speed. Johnny is moving the wrong way, though. He's moving a lot to his right, not so much to his left, which is more effective against the softball. Again, though, Tapia on the inside, where really Ayala's a little bit more effective. That's more his style. The clash heads there. No cuts resulted. The left hook again downstairs by Tapia. When he gives Ayala some foot movement, he's much more effective in lateral movement, and that's what they want from him. And see, now when he moves to his left, he's much more effective, and Ayala can't really land what he wants. What hasn't been evident is the double left hook from Tapia. He's been landing it to the body, but then not coming with, with it to the head. There's one left hook, see, but none following it to the head, which is usually a good weapon for him. Straight right hand gets in by Tapia. He's had a better fourth round, much better fourth round. Good hand speed by Ayala on the inside. And Tapia just kind of stands and looks. And a right hook by Ayala. Look at this side, guys. Good defense, too, by Al on the inside. They bang heads, but that's really no one's fault. Both men just kind of put their head in. Ayala, a very good, compact inside fighter. This is good work by Tapia. What an intriguing matchup this has been and is going to be, I think. Under a minute left to go in round four. A round that's been very close to this point. Big hook by Tapia. And there's the hook downstairs. Tapia is getting some good work done downstairs. Now he switches to lefty, and now. Gets that jab on hook. Oh, and there was a bad clash of heads, but again, no cut apparently. Good right hand by Tapia. Better round for Johnny Tapia, especially toward the end, and there he lands yet another right hand. He wanted to go after him again. So we head into round five. Johnny Tapia against Pauli Ayala. Tapia defending his Bantamweight title. Every time Tapia throws the left hook to the body, there's a right hook from T Ayala as a counter. Boy, this is an exciting fight. Both men in the trenches now. Both using the right weapons, both fighting exceptionally well. Good double left hook by Tapia. Again, he rips a left hook downstairs. Fighting the right form now against the lefty, but Ayala also doing good work on the inside and throwing the uppercut they want. 
Big hooks by Tapia. It's a war here in round five. We haven't seen Tapia this flat footed in a long time. He is staying in the trenches with Pauli Ayala and ripping body shots. Those will have an effect as this fight goes on. Those are huge left hooks by Tapia downstairs. Huge left hooks. And they are slowing Pauli Ayala down, I believe. Tapia, who has moved up to the Bantamweight division from the junior Bantamweight. Oh, big hook again. Tapia has found a home for that left hook, and it's opening everything else up. A very big round five for Johnny Tapia. He has controlled this. He is ripping big shots to the body. He is getting in his rhythm. Now here comes Ayala with some good jabs and good combinations. Good right hook by Ayala. Big hook by Tapia, the left hook, with under a minute left to go here in round five. Excellent bantamweight matchup. This is a superb fight by any oh, standard. Watch that inside. Watch that inside. Come on, watch that inside. Hand speed and combinations from both men. Tapia with a big right hand, pushing Ayala back, and double left hooks again. What a great round five, momentarily. So we head into round six of what is turning into as entertaining a championship match as you could possibly want to see. The show was listed as the Warriors. Well, guess what? These guys are showing us they are just that. Pauli Ayala is so motivated to win a world title. It eluded him last year. And Johnny Tapia desperate to hang on to the title. Looking ahead to many possible big money fights, not the least of which is against another left-hander who's pretty well known. A couple weight divisions above him, and that is Prince Nassim Hamed. Again, the clash of heads. And uh, Tapia gets the worst of that again. Big hook downstairs again by Tapia, but Ayala comes with the uppercut. Both men doing what they need to do and doing it well. Good. Every time Tapia switches to southpaw, he does well. And he did it again there. There's a lot of hand speed being exhibited in that ring. Johnny Tapia at age 32 is really an interesting case study as a boxer. He just keeps getting better. And he's the only guy I ever have seen in my life who had four years off from the ring doing terribly abusive things to himself, came back as a better fighter than he was when he left the sport. And I mean a measurably better fighter. Tapia is controlling the pace now. He's, he's moving to his left better. He's getting the hooks in, the combinations, the right hands. Zayala working on the inside. Both men doing a lot of body work. And now when Tapia throws that left hook to the body, he's bringing it back up to the head quicker, and Ayala's not able to land the right hook as he likes. Good straight left hand by Pauli Ayala. And there's Tapia. He is so effective as a lefty. He might want to stay in that posture longer. He's confusing Ayala with that stance and getting the job done. And his speed is now having an impact on Ayala. Good work on the inside, though, by Pauli Ayala. What a great fight. Now there's Tapia moving to his left to cut Ayala off, which is the right move. 
Ayala working well on the inside. Good right by Tapia. And a jab. What a great round of boxing. Everyone is a gem. This fight has gone on. He's gotten into his rhythm. Now there, as a lefty, look how effective he is. He is very effective as a lefty in this fight. And I think if I were him, I would stay as a lefty more often. And at the end of the round, good hand speed shown by both men, especially Tapia. And I'll tell you what, Johnny Tapia, we don't see him switch very often to the lefty stance, but when he does, he's effective. And boy, he's right, been good with it tonight. 32-year-old Johnny Tapia, 29-year-old Pauli Ayala. Tapia undefeated, 46-0-2 with 25 KOs. Pauli Ayala, 27-1 with 12 KOs. Give me a clean round. One a champion, one would love to be a champion. They are putting on a show for us here tonight as we head into round seven. Right hand gets in by Tapia. with the right hand. Again the right hand, the quick right hand of Tapia. Speed, the foot speed of Tapia, very tough for anybody to contend with. It was bedeviling to Danny Romero. It has been to a number of his opponents. And now it's starting to be a factor here against Pauli Ayala. Now here switches to lefty. Lands the jab. Tapia goes flat-footed, lands the hook, and Ayala counters with the left hand. Another good straight left hand by Pauli Ayala. There's the hook again by Tapia after he thrown the straight right hand. Round seven, a good round, not as wildly exciting as the last two, but then everybody needs a break, don't you think? Now they're on the inside. Good hand speed by Ayala, and Tapia comes back. Good uppercut by Tapia. The left hook of Tapia, not been as big a factor in this round as it was in the last couple. There it is, he throws it, blocked by the arm of Ayala. Under a minute left to go here in this round. There's the hand speed of Tapia. Each man takes turns landing good combinations. And again, the speed of Tapia stands him in good stead as Ayala has to chase him. First one man, then the other with combinations. did Ayala. Here we see Tapia throwing a series of combinations. Not everything landed there, but the left hand did get in. And continuing. Very fascinating tactical fight. Let's listen in now. Okay, you're chasing him. Let's cut him up a little more. We head into round eight in this scheduled 12 rounder. It is for Johnny Tapia's WBA Bantamweight Championship. Pauli Ayala is the challenger and a worthy one at that, as you've seen in what has turned out to be an excellent championship match. Good right hook by Ayala. Tapia is standing in front of him, which they don't want, and he pays the price when he does it because Ayala gets after him. Good hand speed by Pauli Ayala. And here comes Tapia back. 
Good hook by Tapia. And another one. He's ripping those left hooks. Good counter. Now there's a southpaw again. Tapia is effective. I think he is missing the boat by not staying as a lefty more often. Good hook by Tapia. And a right hand. Double right hook by Ayala. Good combinations by Tapia. A hook gets in again by Tapia. They are both throwing big punches and good punches. Good combination by Tapia. And then a jab. If there are any better Bantamweights out there than these two guys, I would be shocked. You are looking at the two best Bantamweights in the world right there. Both men, in addition to the work they're doing to the head, are going to the body a lot. Um, under a minute left to go here in round eight. If this fight goes to a decision, I guarantee you there will be an unhappy camp either way if it's continued to be fought in this manner. Not a bad round eight for Tapia, though, as he has controlled the tempo a little bit more. But like the others, it's been close. Right hand gets in by Tapia. Pushes Ayala back. Good hook by Tapia. And Ayala comes back with a one-two combination. And now Tapia tries to rev up the crowd. But Ayala responds with his own and by punching. But the last thing Paulie Ayala wants is to get into a, that kind of thing with Johnny Tapia. And I think when this crowd of about 6,000 leaves Mandalay Bay, they're going to be fans of both these fighters, no matter who they're rooting for. Straight left hand gets there by Ayala. Freddie Roach told Tapia, you got to get your foot outside, your left foot outside the right foot, so you can throw that hook in the straight right hand. It's the key against the southpaw. Early in this round, it's Pauli Ayala who has dictated the pace much more. Uppercut by Tapia, as well as the right hand. And good defense by Pauli Ayala in this round, blocking a lot of those shots. Ayala, the 29-year-old from Fort Worth, Texas. Only one loss in his record. 26 wins as a pro. 27 wins as a pro. And he is fighting a superb fight here tonight against a great champion. in the inside by Pauli Ayala. And he's having himself a pretty good round nine. Less movement from Tapia in this round, and so it's been fought more at close range. Good jab by Tapia. And Tapia has not moved to lefty yet in this round, where he was so effective early. Good foot movement by Johnny. The double left hook by Tapia. That's what he wants to do. Excellent job being done by Joe Cortez. Breaking the fight is when he needs to, but not when he doesn't have to. And toward the end of this round, Tapia is starting to come on. With under a minute left to go here in round nine. Good left hand by Allen. Tapia hit with the right hand, but 
when he switched from lefty to righty. Good hook, but Paul Ayala comes back in what is the good round nine for him. Knocked off balance by a left hook, but not hurt. And he comes back, and they end the round slugging. Tapia slips down. Joe Cortez is doing a masterful job of refereeing this fight, gets in between the two quickly. Left hook by Tapia. Well, Pauli Ayala had himself an excellent ninth round. He looks down at me. Here is Johnny Tapia. Landing the left hand over Ayala, or trying to in any case. At the end of, toward the end of the round, there was Johnny Tapia slipping and worried that uh, Ayala would hit him when he's down. But that's that's a wonderful job of refereeing by Joe Cortez. We head into round 10. Both these fighters are used to going long distances. Ayala's been 12 rounds four times before. Eight times, nine times for Johnny Tapia to go 12. So there's a cut on the brow of Tapia. Joe Cortez calls time for them to take a peek. At, that's got to be from a clash of heads because you couldn't get a cut on that part of your head from a punch. Uh -huh. Get back in our corner. Get, get, get back in our corner. We continue. Both men land good shots. A straight left by Allen and an uppercut by Tapia. Good combinations by Tapia. Those were good hard punches. Some of the best he's thrown in this fight. A couple of those were blocked, but a couple got through. Boy, Johnny Tappy is setting down on that right hand now. And Ayala coming back with his own uppercut. And hooks. When Tapia leads off with the jab, he's more effective. He's been ignoring that punch. Both men landing big punches. This has turned into a war. Ayala with the right hand downstairs. Tapia with his own left hook to the body. This is one of the best Bantamweight championship fights in recent memory. Good combination by Pauli Ayala. Under a minute left to go in round 10. Good right hook by Ayala. They both go to the body. Good jab and a good straight right hand by Tapia. Back comes Paulie Ayala. Big sigh. Coming from Ayala as if to say, wow, this is not easy, and it isn't. An excellent round 10. As well. Not everything got through, but a couple of those shots got through very well. And here's the good right hand by Johnny Tapia. That was one of his best during the course of this round and in fact in the fight. Johnny Tapia biting the hair of Paulie Ayala. It's getting rough in there. 
we head into the 11th round. Johnny Tapia defending his WBA Bantamweight Championship against number two ranked contender Pauli Ayala. It has been everything it was advertised as. In recent rounds, Tapia has not switched back to lefty, which was very effective for him early. And I think if they look back at this, the tapes of this fight, he and Freddie Roach will probably rue the fact that he didn't fight as a lefty more often because he was effective when he did. Little blood coming from the nose of Tapia. That's the only real blood that's shown in this box. Good hook again downstairs by Tapia. He has thrown some monster left hooks downstairs. And Ayala, for his part, has done some very good body work as well. There's the lefty stance of Tapia. Let's see how long he stays in it. Well, switches back when he gets hit with a jab by Ayala. So far, very even and almost nondescript round 11. Neither man gaining the advantage. Neither man landing as effectively here in round 11 as we reach the halfway point. Tapia using a jab and a straight right hand. That's been the effective weapon for him when he's been able to throw it. And a hook downstairs. Another hook by Tapia. A right hand that strays low by Tapia. And there's Ayala doing his work on the inside where he has been excellent. But hook again by Tapia. And a big right hand by Tapia, but Ayala comes back with a counterpunch. It has been so throughout this fight. Just when you think one man has a big advantage, the other will come back. The history of this arena is still a very young one, but the Mandalay Bay Event Center will not house too many boxing matches better than this one, no matter how long its history is, and it looks like it will have a long one. <laughs> round 11, a pivotal round, and might be a Johnny Tapia round. He has been, I think, a better ring tactician in this bout and landed more punches. And every round, so important. Now, good left hands by Ayala, though. They both land big shots at the end of the round. Here is Tapia, who I thought had a pretty good round 11. Throwing lots of combinations. There he gets a good jab in against Ayala as Pauly tries to counterpunch. At the end of the round, they both landed shots. Probably Ayala's left hand a little bit better. We head into the 12th round. Emotion from Freddie Roach in the corner that we don't always see from him. The crowd shows its appreciation. And let's see if Tapia is as aggressive as they want him to be. Good hook by Tapia starts off this round. Ayala with a good combination. Good combos inside by Pauly. Tapia staying on the inside now. Good double right hooks by Ayala and uppercuts. Pauly Ayala ripping those shots in the inside. Gains the early advantage in this round. Good hook again by Tapia. Tapia rips shots and then as a lefty gets the straight left hand in. Jab and a straight right by Tapia. Both men, look at all they have left here in the 12th round. Throwing good short. Compact combinations. Good shot to the body by Tapia. And Pauli Ayala comes back. Good right hand by Tapia. Both men fighting with skill and enthusiasm. Sometimes that's a rarity. Good hook downstairs. And here's Ayala with the combination.
jabs by Ayala, or by uh, Tapia as Ayala came in. Good right hand, then a hook by Tapia. Beautiful, oh, nice left hook. May have hurt Ayala momentarily, and a good right by Tapia. This is a war here in the 12th round. A minute left to go. Both men are landing big shots. Wow. This is as good as it gets. Tapia ripping a left hook to the body. Pauli Ayala on rubber legs. Who wouldn't be tired right now? Both men are throwing everything. And if technique is starting to go south, who can blame them after what a war of attrition? Big hook downstairs by Tapia. This is one of the best lower weight fights I have ever seen. Big hook, here comes Ayala, right hand by Tapia. Another right hand. Only 14 seconds left to go. They are leaving it all right here. Big right by Tapia. The crowd will let you know what they think of this fight. It was one of the great Bantamweight fights in ages. Pauli Ayala falls to the mat all in happiness and exhaustion in the last round. Getting hit by some shots by Ayala, then coming back with some very big shots. Blocking the hook by Ayala. It doesn't get better than this. Here is Pauli Ayala, who had his, his moments in that round as well. Good uppercut. Tapia with the right hand. And then Tapia again throwing the right hand in. That right hand became a huge weapon for Johnny Tapia, but the left of Ayala was also big. Pauli Ayala using the straight left hand. That was his, one of his big weapons, that along with the right hook. It is a shame who can ask for more. Jimmy Lennon Jr. getting ready to give us the decision. I'll tell you what. I don't think anybody knows. Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, before I read the score totals, we both see a tremendous 12 rounds of action. No matter who the winner is, they both deserve a round of applause. Polly Ayala and Johnny Tapia, great fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we do have a unanimous decision as the judges agree. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Guy Jutra scores the bout 115 to 114. Judges Dwayne Ford and Fernando Viso both score the bout 116 to 113. All three in favor of the winner and the new WBA champion of the world, Pauli Ayala. Pauli Ayala pulled the upset in one of the most superb Bantamweight championship matches you will ever see. Johnny Tapia is not happy about it. I don't know about the 116-113 vote. 115-114 could work, I guess. There you see Teresa, the wife of Johnny Tapia. You can't take a thing away from that man, Pauli Ayala, the 29-year-old from Fort Worth, who ended up winning a unanimous decision to take the WBA Bantamweight Championship away from Johnny Tapia.